we're going. All right, here we are, back again. Happy Smorgasbord Day. Happy Smorgasbord. I think it's been several several weeks yeah, since we've done this. Lot. Yeah, we've had too much to talk about. Yeah, I feel bad because it's been all business. That's true. Yeah. No play. It's all business. Mm -hmm. Well, now we get to come out and and uh, have a little random talk. Talk. Yeah. As if none of our other ones are random. We but, can we can we can go off the beaten path a little bit here. On and this I, one. I chose this other path. And it made all the difference. I love that Shakespeare line. <laughs> Okay. That's a good one. That's going to require them to listen to the last like episode. Billy Shakespeare. <laughs> here, let's try this. Uh, I, I'm excited to try this. Okay. Is this the one you were talking about? It was. So let me, let me give you the okay. quick the quick uh, rundown here. Uh, ooh, fine. Go ahead. It was, I think, on the the rhythm episode or the vibration. You We pulled out and we pulled out a butterscotch beer. And we Mark, enjoyed. They were really good. Oh, it was good. I don't... I remembered... These ones being not as good as the ones that you got. Okay, so this is a f Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Beer, non-alcoholic, um, a Butterscotch Cream Soda. I like Butter Beer better. You know, Butterscotch Beer sounds cooler. But, okay. Full, this one, this one does have Stevia too. But I just always like to add Stevia. I think it's just to knock the cal. This one only has 150 calories. What was okay. the other one? More than that? Yeah, I think the other one was 170. Here we go. Well, so this is, uh, we're going to see, this is the soda that Harry Potter endorses. Is it? I don't know. Oh. Oh, it has the name Flying Cauldron, right? You know, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got, like got a cauldron on a on a broom. It, it just, does, the butterscotch is kind of it's it's something about it it's all right i wish i had one of the other ones now to yeah. taste one of the other ones well no but the other one it was just a lot smoother okay this one has a lot more um kind of a fake butterscotch taste or i don't know hey at least it's gluten-free yeah <laughs> uh this one actually tastes more like okay i what i'm gonna tell you is if they had a buttered popcorn cream soda, this would be it. Tastes like butter. Oh. Like popcorn. Like, Look at that manufactured for. My reeds. eyes. Reeds. Oh, Reeds ginger, this, ginger ale. This goes back to Reeds. This is a Reeds product. We traced it back. We know what the problem is now. Yeah, Reeds ginger beer is not everything that we uh, I had built it up to be. But this reminds me, instead of butter scotch, buttered popcorn. It has oh. that buttered, like that. You oh, go to yeah, the movie yeah, thing, yeah. Can you taste it I can it taste now? it, yeah. It was, it's an aftertaste. Yeah. It's got that. So that's 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 my problem with it. It's it's good, though. I'll drink it. It's it's just not the best. But, Brandon, cheers. Butterscotch beer. Flying Cauldron. Yes, and Reed's is hidden on the label, but it's a Reed's product. They tried to hide it from us. We got to the bottom of it. Yeah. More heavy on the butter, light on the scotch. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, oh, I, I uh, finally, I, we had talked about uh, the comment by Angel Eyes or whatever. The, the, one somebody commented and said, "Hey, you guys uh, should look into doing uh, Manly P. Hall's yeah. Initiates of the Flame." Yeah. Um, I listened to it. And it was is really interesting, and uh, so I decided we got us copies of it. So we're gonna start reading it and looking into it because it's cool because it's all about symbolism and what the different symbols mean. It's a good you'll like it. You know, this is not a big deal here, Mark, but I really I know that one of the one of our copies has a, it's this one right here is a little off printed, but this I like this uh, printing. Like, I like the black pamphlet e feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, this must be one of those. But yeah, I'm going to try to get another one uh, because that one is crooked. This other one turned out perfect. But 
Anyway, it's got all kinds of things, and it talks about what are you showing them? Scarab. About the scarab, about what the different symbols you know that you hear about in different things um, in Masonic and Arthur King Arthur's legends and stuff. Yeah, like actually, one of the interesting things is um, like the sword and the stone goes back to Moses. There's a you know in the the rod the the rod and the stone. Okay. That he pulled out. I don't remember that him pulling the rod so out of the stone. The, the, so he could get married to his wife. Uh, Are you sure you're not missing up stories? The rod that he had was in the stone. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize. I don't. I don't. Yeah, there's I, this whole there's this whole story. That's where the that's where the King Arthur myth got that. Okay. Anyway, Porter talked about it a long time ago, and oh. it's in. Uh, I must have forgot. It's in the uh, Legends of the Jews, or is it? Was it? Josephus's or, book? No. Well, uh, no. What was? What's the other? The the book of Jasser, I think, has it in it. Okay. Anyway, that's cool. I don't. Want, yeah. I didn't realize that. There's all these weird stories. Like that was one of the things he he did to prove, or that kind of won the his his father-in-law. Yeah. Okay. When he was out in the desert, when he got left Egypt. Yeah, and his father-in-law for helped hooked him up years. with some with some uh, magic and stuff, or some some power of some kind yeah the teachings of of, yeah. of uh the true god or whatever but anyway yeah, this is um, cool i'll look I, i'm i'm excited for, for this so one. it's it, it'll be i it'll be interesting to see when we finally both read from it how we're gonna talk about it you know because i think anyway this is this is good because a lot of the stuff i'm looking into right now mm -hmm. has a lot of these different symbols yeah and actually if you if you look at like, like you were actually we were in the break. We were talking about the Book of Revelation and yeah, I, I, that's like exciting. Like the symbolism in there, the candles and and the dragon and and all this different stuff. There's they mean and all mean stuff, you know that we usually aren't aware of what it, what it's supposed to symbolize. Like even fire, like you know Isaiah when mm -hmm. he has that vision. The tongue and the, and the... they take they lift the the coals. Yeah, and they put them the, on the uh, tongue to his. Lips, his lips yeah and to purify him you know because he's worried about talking and it all means something yeah yeah so anyway we'll we'll get into that but that's we still have to finish up the uh Kabbalion. so yeah. what have you been checking out brandon i know you've been doing some online shopping <laughs> you gotta hurt my hermes shirt here today. brandon showed up this morning with this sweet hermes shirt yeah. and i'm like what hermes yeah, like where do you get that? I uh, searched for it on Amazon and found a company that uh, makes them. What's cool is I'm thinking I'm gonna order more because they have a cool, they have like they have a cool Zeus one. Really? Yeah, and the same style. That's cool. Awesome. So it all started whereas I bought, I purchased a shirt uh, a few weeks ago, and it it's it's you probably have seen it. It's kind of trendy, I think. It says uh, Pluto. Never forget, and it had like the dates of Pluto being a planet. Oh, okay. And so it was because I bought that shirt. Who's that Pluto? I've already forgotten. The planet? No, I know. I got it. I was. I felt. I fell like, for his joke. The, the, the freaking planet! I fell for it. The dwarf planet. <laughs> so, um, and you know how Amazon is when you buy something, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden like shows yeah, you yeah. other things, and then yeah. I, so I saw some like, I think it was like a. Uh, I think it was like an Athena shirt or something or some other like Greek god or goddess. And I'm like, I wonder if they, oh, I'm going to see if they have Hermes. And so, uh. You know what shirt I'd be interested in? Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus. Okay. So it's not. Plant and not eggplant the god. wizard. The eggplant wizard, yeah. Kid Icarus. Yeah. Like, anyway, that was my, that was the Nintendo game. That was the first game that I played through and beat. And it was hard. You so had to put in little codes and everything. So I played the Nintendo game, but I didn't have... When it first came out, I didn't have my first Nintendo yet. My good friend had a Nintendo who lived next door. And so I played... I remember I remember they rented it or they owned it on and off. And we, So I played Kid Icarus there. But I actually played Kid Icarus more. There was a Game, there was a game Boy version that came out. Oh yeah, the, the Myths and Monsters? Maybe that's what it was. So I played the Kid, I played the Kid Icarus on the Game Boy a lot. Mm -hmm. Take note. Okay. Take note that Mark did not finish the butterscotch beer. Just take note. 
as a fan of this okay. uh, p- podcast. Yeah. In case you're, in case you are I'm just not tasting way too watching much butter and you're just listening to this, Mark did not finish his butterscotch beer. Like, okay, you know Harry Potter, he has those jelly beans that are flavored. I don't. Like they have ones that taste like boogers. And oh, stuff really? And, okay. And like, gross. And this would be one that would be, actually, if you get Jelly Belly, there's buttered popcorn one. I remember this, that. Yeah. This is and that one was. This is what. This, yeah, yes. you're right. There you go. But I'm saying, it's it. So, if uh, they have like anyway, it just reminded me way too much of buttered popcorn. It's okay, man. Later on, you'll probably take another swig and finish it up. Yeah, I will. Oh, it will be finished. It will be done. No thing will. The one thing I've never, I couldn't finish. I we went to. Uh, this place called Haji Baba over in Tempe. Yeah, I know that. I know Haji Baba. Yeah, they have euros and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it, but it's it's a year. There's food and then there's also a little market. Yeah. And they have this yogurt drink. Hmm. And you couldn't finish it. Well, yeah, it's just basically like carbonated water, and then there's like yogurt floating around in it. <laughs> I don't know. It's not. I'm, not, I'm unaware of that. It's not good. Okay. But actually, I did try. Um, have you had uh, kefir? Yeah. Stuff's good. I had a strawberry kefir. Yeah. Remind me of strawberry uh, yogurt. Anyway, but it was a warm. Okay. The thing was, it might have been better if it was cold, but this is. It was warm. Oh yeah. I, and it was. It was it had a lot of bad. fizz, you know, and and then there's just chunks of yogurt. So it kind of sounds like a bad, a it's a bad free, interpretation a bad of probiotic. Italian soda with like the cream on top. <laughs> no, it was well. It was supposed to be a yogurt drink, though. Okay. It wasn't supposed to be like that. It had gone bad. Okay. Anyway, if anybody knows about that from Middle Eastern or Indian food drinks, and you like it, I don't mean any offense. I just was not my thing. But so yeah, uh, that's sick that he remember is they so had those, those those drinks that. Uh, had little little balls in it like yeah. little yeah they're like they're little um but it they came out with it they tried to make it like popular yeah i can't remember what they're made with those balls are made out of yeah they have it i mean if you go to like uh asian um mm-hmm. yeah they call like bubble teas or something yeah boba tea or, yeah boba yeah, tea. yeah 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 but this one was like you have to have a to fat market it you gotta have a fat it. straw yeah so they can come up through the straw mm-hmm. yeah i don't remember what that stuff's called anyway okay enough about I'm back onto the okay. Warning: This may be the last time you see me drinking a Diet Dr Pepper because Brandon says that due to this thing that's going on in the world, that Texas has been hit hard, and that one some of the Dr Pepper uh, places have been affected by it. I was so just we warning. Need, Mark. This is a call to President. To Congress and the Senate to please send money to manufacture more Dr. Pepper. Yeah, we can't have it run out. <laughs> That's the one thing. I mean, if you I wouldn't wanna, be you too would, bothered by it, but you want to talk would. about a uh, essential? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have the, I don't have anything. I just sneezed. Stuff that's essential with a virus out there. Doctor Pepper. Doctor. It's got doctor in the name. Yeah, and it's. Uh... I'll drink to that. That it's something that used to be it used to be good for your body. Yeah. So that's when it had cocaine in it, <laughs> like all the old sodas. <laughs> that's that's when it had heroin. It used to have twenty four secret ingredients. But yeah, one of them. Twenty three. Yeah, one, one of them was heroin. <laughs> like that's what gives it its, its brown tinge. Yeah, all that stuff used to be popular. Yeah. So I, you know, what that would have been so like to live back then. And like, yeah, you're drinking soda for actual health. Like your yeah. doctor's like, I recommend you drink a bottle of Moxie. Have oh. you ever seen that one? No. Moxie, it's an old soda. I would love it's probably Moxie Cotton. Yeah. Like Oxycontin. <laughs> that was what was in Moxie. It was Oxycodone. Every anyway. like drug today came from, used to be in some soda sometime. <laughs> like, dude, if I can get my hands on some old sodas, I can make some serious money on the streets. You know what? Some what's funny is someday, because um, sugar is really bad for you, right? Like, that's, there's no question that sugar is really bad for you, your body. 
Is it really? Okay, Brandon? Mark. Mark. Wait. Well. Well. Oh. 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 Brandon just put on his uh, my, lab coat. Yeah, I put my lab coat on just now. <laughs> Where's your stethoscope now? I'm just joking. Go ahead. So sugar's not good for your body, yeah. but we—that's like the main ingredient for most sodas. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I mean, it's 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 we're we're still following that trend. Today. Well, it's not. It's it's actually high high fructose corn syrup for most. So sodas. someday high fructose corn syrup is going to be like a recreational drug. Yeah, you're gonna have to buy it on the street. No, you're gonna have to buy it on the streets. That's right. Like, yeah. Eventually, they'll they'll outlaw it. It's gonna be an and outlaw. Somebody will be like, like, dude, they they got pixie sticks. <laughs> <laughs> they lay the pixie sticks out. You're all snorting it up. <laughs> and then some like some know it all is gonna be like, hey, you know that back in the day, soda used to have this in it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's funny. But uh, okay, so let's go on to that. Is funny that could happen now. Yeah, well, yeah. My, I, I don't think I don't know why it wouldn't. I'm saying, think about this. Doctors used to recommend people go and smoke cigarettes and different things. You know, like, yeah. Like it was just like, like how far? Maybe medicine probably not that far it's come either you know we're just There's discovering be- like bad things for your body trying them out for about a half a century finding out that it's not actually really working and then outlawing it yeah anyway so you guys just be careful out there yeah be safe oh people keep saying that anyway it is it's common isn't I'm like, it they're like stay safe and i'm like what i so a lot of my meetings it's right now I do thing. are remote meetings because I'm at, I'm working at home, working from home right now. Yeah. And we're, when people used to say, hey, talk to you later, now let's stay safe. Yeah. I'm, it's it's weird how, I mean, this isn't even, but it's just weird how uh, quickly a cultural a thing can, can pop up. Because all of a sudden people are suddenly saying that. And I'm like, okay. You know what's, yeah. you know what's funny is I was talking to uh, my my mom the other day. And what, one of the things that's interesting is uh, people are, a lot of people have been not going to church lately. Yeah. And it's, and it's one of the first, for most people, it's like, this is like the only time in their life that they, they've ever had. Yeah. Without like this, this long stint of not going to church. Yeah. And so I, I wonder we, if they're ever going to get him back. We were joking about that. That's what we were joking about. And that's I was true. like, oh man, that'd been awesome to like not go to church for a while. <laughs> and, uh. But we were talking, and as we we're talking, we realized I was talking to her because she does, and and they're talking about, hey, we're, this is our, this is when we're going back, and I was like, wow, I mean, I mean, what a time we live in, when all of a sudden the people don't do things, everything's different within like months, everything's different. Yeah. But yeah, so. Um, I I did uh. I did have something that I was gonna bring today for this awesome smorgasbord, but I didn't. And it, it's you saw it's delivered now, so I'll bring it next time. But I did have something that what somebody it? talked oh, about. Big A book. Yeah, yeah. But I do have something else. So Brandon, I kind of wanted to. Down. Oh. What are you going for that again? Oh, trying. So you had someone make a comment and and look and ask us to look into this uh, initiative of the flame. Initiative of the flame, and I was kind of thinking that's a good idea. If maybe if there's anybody else, if you, if you have something that you've read or are interested in and think that we'd be interested in it who i don't know hey. the, who's it angel eyes or angel fire what's his name something like that yeah it's uh i can look it up uh they know who they are the guy whoever you are You're that, from pennsylvania whoever you are that and uh recommended this this initiates of the flame it's to a, us it's a, it's actually a really interesting book because you just don't realize how how big of a effect symbolism has on us mm-hmm. you know and Anyway, I've listened to this whole thing on a different thing where they were talking about symbols for for corporations and everything, and they put all this. It's not, you know, it's just it's it's a, something that once you see it, you know it. You know, it's it's a very powerful tool that's used, and that's why, uh, like, in religious stuff, symbolism is is important. So check this out. Go ahead. So what I to finish my finish my comment I was going to make. Yeah. So if if you're listening or watching. Like send us recommend send us recommendations. Well, do, okay, don't go crazy. Don't go crazy, and don't send us like stuff that we don't want to. We're not interested in. <laughs> well, no, no, no uh, 
Okay, I'm just saying, like, Mark's you know, like, you don't wait, want people Brandon, like, don't open the floodgate. Yeah, don't, we don't, we already have a deluge, the Gnostic deluge. So we yeah. already got a flood of knowledge. We have a flood. I'm just saying, if there's something that, like, hey, you know what, this, or this is a good book. If you know, we, we're not, if you feel like we've missed it. Like, yeah, he said, he just, uh, it was angel eyes. I was right. He or she said, also, have you ever heard of Manny P. Hall? Manly, Manly, P. Hall. Manly P. Hall. What a name, huh? He right? wrote In Issues of the Flame. And would you consider doing an episode on that? And I, I like, just, uh, I, I listened to it and I was like, oh, this is good. And I've heard a lot about Manly P. Hall. And I, and, yeah, uh, and uh, actually, I was just listening to something yesterday and they were talking about some of his other stuff that's supposed to be really good. But um, anyway. This and this one is a nice little book too. It's, very, it's, not, it's page, not a tome. Sixty nine pages. Yeah, and it's got a lot of pictures. <laughs> uh, this is my kind of book, but I he does it simple enough with enough uh, uh, explanation explanation to make it interesting. I mean, there's all kinds of neat stuff about flint, you know what the fire represents and and stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna give this one a read over. So anyway, uh, so you were going. To so your... I, I I purchased a book a a week ago or so or two weeks ago now, and it's this uh, it's for my kids if we're schooling. It's like a it's a book about um, geometry and music and logic and stuff, right? And then I purchased another book by the same company, and it's like rhetoric and grammar, okay. And I noticed that each of these books is 600 no 314 pages long i saw that i noticed that each each book was 314 and so i went to go order another one and i came and it came the other day and this one's about megalithic structures mm -hmm. from like ancient like stonehenge and stuff same company 314 pages and i'm like whoa are they purposely making all these books 314 pages so then i went like this can't be a coincidence. There's, they did this on purpose. What's with 314? What so I Google it, and I don't know anything about angelic numbers. Okay? I don't either. But I, they're, apparently they're, you can go look up like what uh, the meaning of a number, and it's like, there's like an, it's an angelic meaning to numbers. Okay. And 314 is, has to do with like knowledge and like learning. Okay. Or no, it's 314 or 316. So I thought it was cool that there was like, there's a publisher that's actually printing books and purposely making sure that there's only there's, a, there's exactly the amount of pages needed so that the book would help. So the book would, almost like they're casting a little spell on the book by making giving it an extra, an extra little oomph of, <laughs> of meaning. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well... Yeah, it's like... Uh, By making them 314 pages. I've since gone and looked at all the other books they published, too, that are up from the same series, and they're all 314 pages, so... Really? Yeah. It's pretty interesting. If it was 316, I'd be like... Uh, yep. Like John 316, John 316. Man. The football scripture. They're always holding signs saying John 316 in you know, sports. Why do they do that? Huh. It's just what people do. To let people know. I guess. Preaching preaching on, uh, during the game? Mm hmm Yeah. It's just... Uh, but... Yeah, it's one... Of, it is one of those weird things. Uh, you got the Virgils or the Diet Dr. Pepper. Those things that... In, in buildings and stuff, they don't have a 13th floor, even though they do. They don't put it on the elevator. Yeah, why is that? You know, I've heard because that because thirteen's a unlucky, unlucky oh, number. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying, there's all these things in in the world. You're right. That, a good good point. Yeah. So okay. Oh wait, so what was your story about? The, you never got to the that book. That was it. That was it. What book? I thought you were talking about something about somebody suggesting something. I don't remember. Okay, here's the thing. Don't suggest anything until we get through this first suggestion. Mark's like, Brandon was not approved to ask for suggestions. No, I'm, not that we have so many, but 
eventually when this thing really blows up it'll be like oh, oh my gosh, gosh please we won't be able to do it people will be like they didn't do my thing anyway but we'll t- we'll definitely take it into consideration and we're always looking for good books recommendations yeah actually. in fact and mark's right uh, when i once he we do have too many right now no once we do well we have right right now i have too many books to go through oh too many books yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the thing that's why i was like this is perfect 69 like, pages yeah i mean the hermetica like or the the Kabbalion, yeah nice and small you know a lot smaller than the amount of hours that we've spent on it already and but. you know what the Kabbalion doesn't even have pictures in it so we're pretty makes me feel pretty smart reading it it's my yeah. first book first non-picture book fr- <laughs> <laughs> you remember that whenever you're a kid and you're first starting to read and and then all of a sudden they give you a book and there's no pictures in it you're like what my youngest you want me to read all of these words where's the pictures my youngest daughter carries around a book right now with her it's a big person book. Really? No words. No no pictures in it. Really? She carries around with it. She can't read it. What book is it? Some like... Some, you don't even know what book it is. Oh, it's like it has a picture of like a unicorn on it. I don't know what it is. It's a big person book? No, I mean, for her it's a big person oh, book. Oh, because it's got no words in it? But she, feels, no, no she feels special carrying it around because she knows that it has no pictures in it. It's like, look at me. It's so cute. So, mm, I open up here and just read for a little bit. Like, I'm um, just looking at the words. You know, that's cool. But yep. uh, anyway, it's just funny that there was a time where we didn't know how to read. Think about that. Like how much we've learned in our life, like speak. There's a time where we can use, where we can even walk, man. So I have a kid at home. I have a three year old who's learning, just learning. He's learning how to t- talk right now. And he's learning his favorite thing is colors and shapes. You know, and that's one thing he only thing he cares about. Like green, that's green. Yes. <laughs> yes. I guess the only thing he cares about is it's so fun. everything is like, Oh, I see a I see a triangle. Like, yeah, that's a triangle. Yeah. Nothing else matters. Yeah. It's funny, like whenever you think about when you're a kid like I remember, okay, out here in Arizona, there's a lot of cornfields, or at least there used to be a lot more. Yeah, there's still there's still some, but not. And, as much. I mean, and there is all over the country. But I remember whenever we'd be driving down the highway, or whatever, by it down the road, and they'd be like going by the cornfields and be like, "Oh yeah, you can yeah." And it, but it's I would always I always think of somebody running, like, and then whenever you come to a ditch, all of a sudden the guy would jump. <laughs> And Austin comes to the next field. Austin he lands and d- runs again. <laughs> that was always the picture I had in my head. Oh man, was there like any music? Did he have music going? No, on? it was just like. But the guy, I would always, for some reason, imagine those were legs running, and Austin jump. Yeah. And Austin next field, and then if if we didn't come to another field, he just have jumped and whatever. Yeah. But it's just weird how your mind works and how you put stuff together. You know what's weirder than that? But it's on the same. You know what's weirder than that? What is the reason why I laughed? Is I did the exact same thing. You did? Yeah, I used to imagine a the guy there running and then <laughs> jump. You, know, you did? Yes, I'm, I'm totally serious. No way! I, I had the exact same story. That's why. I, that's why I laughed the way I did. I couldn't believe that you were saying that. Are you? You're totally I'm dead serious. serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's because it's like the it's like the thing with the Indian shooting a star that we talked about. Yeah. You know, on the Tootsie Roll rappers, like. Where did the like sometimes you hear like you'll know a joke, but then you know, you know, that you learn in elementary school, and then a kid from a totally different elementary school knows the exact same joke. How do those things get spread around? And I'm saying, what like how would that get spread around? How would you know the same thing with the guy running? And must have that must have to do with the way that the, the, the mind works, yeah, it just makes you think of, yeah, run anyway. That's funny. I didn't realize anybody else thought that. That's why I asked you if you ever had music playing in the background. Because oh, I, I you used had to. Music? I would have music playing. On you my, would. Yeah. Even if there was no music in the car, what, what I would song? just like in my no, just in whatever. I was like, I don't even remember. It was always like, like hero music and like, you know, whatever a <laughs> young boy would want to have as the as the soundtrack for the that like scene. Rocky. 
Yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah. Like that that theme song. Something from Survivor. Stronger. Survivor music. Or, yeah. Or yeah, Eye of the Tiger. Or that, what's his name? Um, the guy who does the Karate Kid music. Uh, You're the best around. I don't even know if that who that is. It's his name is... I, I, You're the best around. No, it's a it's a name that you haven't heard. It's a name that you haven't heard before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're the best around. Yeah. For some reason, it's got that weird drum. So that's why I asked you if you ever would do music no, because I I did music around. during those scenes and I would imagine the guy running and had music like Karate Kid <laughs> music playing in my mind or. So you really thought the guy was jumping? Yeah, and then it when just, the, when there would be a sense. canal or something like that, yeah, yeah. there's a jump. Yeah. Yeah. Between fields. Okay. Anyway. That was a uh, that was a bonus. We didn't. That was not scripted. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Obviously, well, obviously, none of this is scripted. What uh, What did you want to talk about, Brandon? I didn't. I don't. Um... I got a few things. Then, okay. Yesterday, I was listening to uh, a Joe Rogan episode. Oh yeah, you mentioned this. I, I'm I'm curious and what happened. I, then all of a sudden, this morning, you know, I was kind of getting ready for the for us and uh, studying and stuff, and and then I brought up to me and Tanya were talking, and. I brought up about the conversation I heard about. Do you know that that uh, basically uh, crocodiles and alligators are immortal? Have I you heard of I this? have not heard this, so I'm curious now. Okay, I looked it up because I was like, I better make I better make sure about. This. Look at the size of that croc. Twenty eight feet in Australia. Anyway, okay, so they have this thing called. Senescence. Senescence, okay. Never so heard the, of it. The question is, is that... That uh, negligible senescence. Okay, so... Gosh, I don't... Okay, so basically... Senescence is uh, the weakening of muscles, lowering of mobility, poor sensory acuity, and age-related diseases are signs of an animal showing senescence. Okay. Okay. Most animals exhibit senescence. Like old age. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so it's basically, you know, like you're growing up, you get, you get to a point, and then you're, you're, it's like thermodynamics or whatever, you know, the second law, where you go to a state of order where you're growing. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to a state of disorder, disorder. where things are breaking down yeah. slowly. That's aging. Okay. That's basic. You know, you're not getting better. Atrophy. Atrophy, yeah. So as we get older, our we deteriorate, you know, and increase our risk of dying. Humans exhibit senescence. Crocodiles do not. So they don't. They don't. They don't get older. They don't go their old age. Okay. This is the, the it says um, here on Earth, uh, they they show no signs of aging, or they are biologically, technically, biologically immortal. Okay, animals like these do only die due to diseases, accidents, or predators. That's the only way they will die. Most of them die of starvation. Yeah. So or disease, you know, but. Okay, some of these animals are sea urchins, lobsters, clams, and hydras. So uh, and what? Hydras? What's a hydra? I don't know. I know what a hydra. I know what the mytho mythologic. What? I don't know. Okay, it just says it. Maybe they're talking about the mythological creature. But yeah, because they keep on regrowing those heads. Vertebrae. Yeah, maybe that's why the hydra was kind of like the one they used in that. But vertebrae is like a few tortoises, turtles, crocodiles, alligators, rough-eyed. Rockfish and flounders have not been observed to have aged biologically. You know, this I is the reason that you can have a two hundred and fifty-five year old tortoise. That's what I was going to refer to. I, I have I have heard of turtles or sea turtles or tortoises, whatever that are, are like this is like a centuries old. Yeah. Well, okay. And there's a thing called the Methuselah tree. We know who Methuselah was. He yeah. lived nine hundred and eighty some odd years. And I've heard so of the with, Methuselah tree too. Yeah, and which has you know it's one cer a certain tree that's been living for 4800 years it's yeah it's like uh that's the first and, thing i thought of when you mentioned this i was like i was thinking are you like like trees trees can yeah it says on the other hand a colony of a single tree has been estimated to be around 80,000 years old anyway so 
Okay, so the crocodile has no such thing as old age. Um, a seven-year-old crocodile is as good as a 70-year-old one in terms of agility and life parameters. Um, That's good to know, right? Yeah. You know, you know, so you'll never be like, oh, don't worry, guys. That's an old-looking croc. Yeah, if you see a crocodile, <laughs> they're, whether yeah, whether he's old or not, yeah. Although they can't die of natural aging, they can't. They also can't live forever. Okay, nature has a way of killing them. The way they die is of starvation or if they contract a disease. So the the example they show here is this this twenty eight foot crocodile that was killed in Australia in nineteen fifty seven. Huge. Twenty eight feet is pretty big. Oh, it's... No, it's a monster. I mean, if you look at the picture, and I'll try to post it in the thing. Because there's a place where we put images. Um, just look up. Uh, Twenty-eight feet. It's like five. The, the problem feet is, tall. is that they get so big they can't find things to eat. Yes. To keep them hungry. Or this one was killed by a gun. But anyway, so okay, I was thinking hmm. along that lines. Anyway, that's really interesting. Like you're just like it get, it gets so big that they can't find a. You know they they'll, run they'll out of die food. because they, there's they no can't way they keep can, up their yeah. yeah their appetite. They they can't keep enough uh, eat enough to keep them alive. Yeah. And okay, and I, I was reading that and I was like, wait, I just figured out giants. Okay, I'm thinking. Okay. Okay, keep on going. So giants. Okay, back. <laughs> this is back. To go back to Enoch and the giants. Right. There was these guys that the were the Nephilim. The Nephilim. That we were like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Here, give me the lost books of the Bible. Well, the yeah, one of, it was saying the the oh the um you're just like what the description of how tall they were was un unworldly though, right? Yeah, you're just like what? Wait, was this in here? Um, but yeah, I think so. Yeah, because there's yes, seventeen point twenty. Uh, they're fifteen spiritual cubits. 792 inches, 66 feet. Wait, what is this? I think it was in the book, one of the books of Enoch. In one of the books yeah, anyway, of Enoch, it, there was like a 5,000 feet tall. 4,400 feet. Okay. That was it. That And it was like, what? That's ridiculous. So I was like, okay, 440 feet is ridiculous. 44 feet is ridiculous. But okay, so anyway... I was like, wait, so this, it could have been possible though. Like that the reason that we die is because we stop growing. But if we could keep growing and be able to, you know, we would, we wouldn't diminish and then and die naturally. Okay, you I see, see what you're saying. saying? You're, so yeah. the one of, and I was like, oh, this is this, and this is gonna sound crazy, but I was like, I was like, I was like, Tanya, dude, we figured it out. It's already starting to sound crazy, so you can go no, for it. Like, I yeah, think you're, I'm you're just good. like, but take, take keep take that a little step further, and you're like, okay, what was the big problem that people had with the giants? Is that they were going around making demands on people, stealing their food. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Just wreaking havoc because they were so big and they were so hungry. In order to stay alive, they had to keep growing, but they had to keep consuming. So people were just like, these these giants are just eating everything. And so they had to be destroyed. Anyway. Yeah, because there, there wasn't enough food to go around. Yeah. So Dinos I'm saying, Dinosaurs imagine, were kind of like giants. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, whenever you think, uh, it's just like how could something get that big you know and it would be a big you know you have a couple of them it would be such a huge strain on the production and on the life around them by th them having to consume all that stuff you know when you have like these images of a brontosaurus just gently just eating leaves off of a tree but looking at but when you consider the size of a brontosaurus it's like how many trees do they go through a day well, the problem with the brontosaurus is like he's got that huge body and then that tiny head like that tiny head 
or now it's a brachio. I think they changed the names of the yeah brachiosaurus or something like that. You know, but I mean, saying like you need something like a big T Rex head because it's got to get be something to get all that food into its belly, and it's got that long neck. Like, no, guys, it takes like something a week. Wrong takes here. a week for that. To Did you know that there's digest. this thing called the Dino, Dino Wars back in the 1800s? Or yeah, Dino Wars. No. It wasn't dinosaurs fighting. It was these two archaeologists. I can imagine that were, yeah. were 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 uh, out there finding skeletons, dinosaur bones, and putting them together. Basically, and they came up these between these two people, and they were just like adventurers and stuff in yeah. their group. They they came up with like a hundred and seventy or two hundred different dinosaurs. That most of them are the ones we have today. It's not scientific. Like, they were just putting stuff together. Oh, so I don't know about this too much. This is very old... This is old archaeology, and it's not even... You know what I'm saying? Do you understand? Yeah. This is like saying that somebody who... You know, probably was taking, like, uh, some kind of snake oil tonic, you know, Mm -hmm. or whatever, or thought that that, uh, frogs caused warts, and were the ones that were piecing these dino bones together and making up these different dinosaurs do is there modern this is what's <laughs> anyway, that feel called crazy. paleontology yeah. or whatever is there there's modern paleontologists right are we still finding more dinosaurs today as far as i know yeah okay anyway i'm, I'm just saying this is an interesting thought that somehow these guys actually got it right like you know i don't know it's just interesting. So, it's old science. Yeah, so that's that's really interesting. But you know, I'm that, saying there's freaking giants, dude. Yeah, and apparently, <laughs> apparently the saying, only reason why, well, and that's that's the question is does anybody actually die of old age? Yeah, you just die. Your heart stops working. Yeah, but like, is there? There's this is. I don't know if this is controversial oh, you're or not. Saying disease. But is there? Is it? Is there ever just like they just stopped, or did something finally? Well, according finally, to, according to the according to that article I read, yeah, you do. You just your things wear out. But I'm saying if you continue to grow, things aren't going to wear out because they're getting bigger rather than stronger. deteriorating. Yeah, they're yeah. Instead of instead of going to that state of or from. A state of order to disorder which is your body is doing it the bones are you know you've grown up and all of a sudden things stop and then they're just diminishing so i don't know anyway i thought that was an interesting idea okay 4400 feet people is stretch the stretch you're saying <laughs> a, a real stretch <laughs> stretch armstrong stretch. Yeah, that's right man but but i was like whoa that's that's pretty interesting that the biggest one of the biggest complaints is that these freaking giants are eating everything. Yeah, it is. That's, that's what it was almost. La- it was almost funny. Yeah. When it was mentioned, when but we then, read that, then I'm like, "This is backed by science." <laughs> they were just getting their broccoli. They needed their broccoli. <laughs> They're eating all the broccoli. Yeah. Why don't they like Brussels sprouts? I hate Brussels sprouts and lima beans. Oh my gosh. Lima They're, beans aren't even a thing anymore, are they? Dude, lima beans are the worst. It's like the biggest, meatiest, but, but le- least untasty, flavorful. Yeah, bean. It's like this big, ugh. But anyway, so I thought that was an, that. So I'm saying there there could have been a possibility. I mean, we I had, see where we you're had going with that. and all that stuff, and I think we yeah. talked about mm-hmm. you know here in Arizona. Giant sloths, yeah, and and uh, all over North America, giant, giant saber tooth cats, all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, all these uh, horses that were as big horses, as like yeah. elephants, horses that were big as a horse, or bigger, bigger than a horse, <laughs> horses that could eat a horse, almost the way that they you know would that help they I'm so hungry, I could eat a I horse. I could eat your horse. Yeah, I could eat your horse. Anyway, so. That's just an idea that struck me, and I was like, "That's actually pretty cool." Yeah, did it? So, okay, so, okay, okay, work, walk, walk with me. Okay. So basically, remember what happened? The angels came down, mixed with man. What did they teach them? 
magic. They're different things, cutting the roots, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. They taught them the key to immortality. They gave, you know, say they gave them a potion or something. And, but the, there was, it's one of those catch 22. It's like a potion, but it's got a curse. And the curse is yep. that you can live forever, but you're going to have to continue to grow. And you're going to have to continue to consume. You can't escape the law. Yeah. Anyway. Law of compensation. So, and that's why God was so mad. He's like, there, and then, and then I was like, wait a second. Okay. So God's like, you're cheating, you know? Yeah. You can't cheat. You can't okay. And now we got to kill you. Okay. You, you've, you figured it out guys. You figured it out. Giants. You're going to live forever because you, you're, you're eating a lot of oranges, getting your vitamin C. You're getting a lot of sunlight, your vitamin D. You know, you're not going to get any diseases. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, but guess what? I'm going to send a freaking flood and you're going to drown. Because guess what? It's like, it's like uh, from the Rudolph. Abominable. Can't swim. Remember? Yeah, yeah. C Cornelius. Or abominables float. That was it. Oh, yeah. wait. They don't float, though. Giants don't float. No. Yukon Cornelius. Yeah, because they both fell off the cliff. That's right, and they and they the came back and survived. They survived. So, uh, if what I was thinking about is now the four thousand foot giant, the flood wouldn't have been able to. They would have been. Well, I know. Safe from the flood at that at that hey, height. Brandon, four thousand feet. Come on. That's ridiculous. Well, I know. I know. But okay. Oh, and another another thing. Is that okay? If if that was the way the world was, that would make sense. Why, early in the patriarchs, they lived so long, yeah, and yeah, yeah. why in the why the Babylonian things like these guys are the guys are usually huge compared to the other. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this is all theory. This isn't. This isn't. You know, I just like whoa. It's possible for something to live that long. So, well, I think it's. I was. Uh, I. I don't have anything to back it up or quote it right now, but. I know that there are certain fields of science today that I there's one guy that I've read books from, or one book from at least actually, but um he he's confident that. Within the next, forty to fifty years. Humans will have obtained some kind of. They basically will start living forever. Well, I I know, but the, they might. I understand. But they the, seem the, so the, confident in that. His problem, I know, but the pro he's probably not taking into cons. He's talking about somehow. Actually, uh, yeah, okay, that's awesome. No, that's like, like, I was like gonna I say. Said, I was like, dude, that might come with a curse. Like, oh, like it, I'm saying, it definitely like will not end up being become, good. Suddenly, you become you. You're having to consume all this stuff because. You're not, you can't just keep in a state of stasis. That's not the way the world works. Either you're growing or you're dying. Right? You're right. No, you're right. That's so definitely the they, they probably, polar, scientists, the polar, on, polar I'm going to put on my scientist. Uh, let's, let's see it. I'm going to put it. What do you do as a scientist? Put on a name badge or something? I think, it, I think it, according to our last, one of our last episode, I think you said a lab coat. Uh, put on my. Um, Your lab coat. Or my Einstein wig. Yeah, your Einstein wig. No, but I'm saying, like, if he, if there's no way you... I mean, I guess they want to keep your cells from breaking down. I don't think it's... I don't think anything goes well when you change They say, it. be careful what you wish for, because you might get it. That's what the giants... That's what the giants said. They were like, why? I'm yeah. so hungry. Imagine dying of starvation. That sucks. I wish I could just eat forever, and then they got their wish. Do you remember? Did you ever hear the seven, the story of the seven Chinese brothers? The one drinks up the ocean. He's all. No, oh. anyway, this is old book I used to read, but his head was all big, like all full of water. Oh, he never, <laughs> he never swallowed it. Well, he did it to save his brother or something. And then he's. Yeah, anyway. so it's a myth, like yeah. the way they explain things. Yeah, but it's a cute picture. Um. Do you have anything else written down there? I see yeah, you, I do. your notes. Mark has notes. 
I re- well, I just wanted to be sure to get my things. I read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, yeah. Or listened to it recently. Yeah. Have you... That book is As so an good. adult. I never did when I was younger. Yeah, I didn't either. I read it... I read it probably in my 20s, and I thought it was so good because it's got that parallel... Or, you, like, it's, it's more... It's kind of like a, a horror mystery story. I mean, not really... Not a big horror story, but... You know, one of the classic horror mm-hmm. stories, but yeah, our it's kids all, but it's got that good and it. evil thing in it. It that's does really good. That's a really, I mean, that is such a good little way of uh, telling the story. Yeah, the, the, it was the story was more timeless than I thought. Yeah, yeah, our yeah, kids listened to that on the audiobook last semester. With a, uh, uh, was it Bob Newfeld that did it? I don't know who was it. Audible or Audacity or not? It was. It was. Yeah, it was an audio. No, no, no. It was. It was one in the. the, It was like the one on Audible. Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah, it's it's really good because he's his his idea is to get to be able to split the duality, you know, to take that and that that's why I was like, ooh, this is cool because Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I mean, good point is to split the 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 good side and the evil side. He, he, and that's his whole point is to make this potion, but it ends up splitting just the evil side off. So he can be either good himself, you know, with his bad traits or the full on bad side. And then he starts kind of getting addicted to the bad side. Oh, and then man. all of a sudden that bad side keeps growing. Did you listen to the song men at work? Uh, Dr. Dr. Heckle and Mr. Jive. Yeah. That was You've the problem song, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story of Dr. Heckle and Mr. Jive. But anyway, oh, that book, okay, this, uh, that book is really good. It's it's a lot about the human condition. Yeah, you're right. You know, and that... I remember when kind I... kind of like, be careful what he wishes for, you know, along that line. I remember when I read it several years ago, I remember thinking to myself... I know I've heard of this, but how come more people... How come this isn't, like, a bigger book? Yeah. Like, how come this is not, like, more, like, suggested or higher, like, higher on the list of, like... Yeah. Like, you it's should a great, read this book. It's yeah. a great book. I mean, and not long or anything. Actually, Robert... It's Robert Lewis Stevenson, right? Who actually is... I don't remember. I mean, he did, he did Treasure Island and... Okay, same guy? Yeah, I believe... Um... Yeah, uh, Robert Lewis Stevenson. So Treasure Island's really good, too. Anyway, but you can get it on LibriVox for free, and Bob Newfeld reads it. And he's one of my favorite readers. He's like kind of got this old-timey like voice. Really? Like, you know? Yeah. And uh, oh, also, I've been listening to Grimm's Fairy Tales. But, um, Mark listens to a lot of books. That's cool, man. Well, I was trying. I was somebody had mentioned about how Grimm's fairy, fairy tales are a lot of hermetic stuff and ancient. I haven't. I, and haven't... I, I was listening to him. I was like, eh, I don't know. Hmm. But there's a lot, you know. There's. Anyways, but Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde is a good book. I recommend if if uh, to kind of get an idea of that that the two two sides kind of thing. Yes, yeah, so uh, I kind of feel I'm kind of feeling like I want to listen to that again. Yeah, actually, I didn't listen to it. I read it the first time, but I'm, I know my kids listened to it recently, so I'm kind of interested. Yeah, it's, it's short too. It's um, interesting. I just had to say um, I like short books. I, I feel like today there's been like this problem where everybody has to write these huge books. Yeah, have you noticed that? Yeah, it's three hours and eleven minutes. That's red. Whatever to happened? Whatever happened to like a short book? Like books today have to be huge. Yeah. Like Sanderson's books are huge. Well, yeah, he could tell the story in a lot shorter period. Yeah, they're they're huge to draw. Well, but Robert Jordan's books are huge. He gets paid by the page. That's why. I don't know. Sanderson's books are good though. I don't like it because, I. Well, like I'm like I I need a, I need a new fiction book, and so I'll be looking for a new fiction book, and I'm trying to like get like the best for my price. Yeah, 
And that's what I, yeah. And so, like, there's, I'll pass on a lot of small books because I want something bigger. Oh, yeah, that's what I do when my audiobooks. Yeah. Like, the ones that I pay for, yes. <laughs> if it's if it's under 16 hours, forget about it. I'm not paying for six hour. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'm going to invest. I want something like the Bible. <laughs> yeah, something huge. Something with that's a book within books. So, um, but anyway, um, if you've never read it, read it. Yeah, I think it's it's a good idea. And now I just, I'm interested. I thought it was so deep because yeah. it's got the whole alchemy thing going on. That's my that's that's where I'm getting at. Is that when you mentioned it, I'm like, I wasn't. I, I I watched. I read it years ago, and I eavesdropped on my kids listening to it last year. I'm like now. I'm like I would like to. I would like to read it again. I was like, they need to make a movie out of that, like a good one. Yeah, they probably tried. They and probably the one, bad ones. Doctor Jekyll and Miss Hyde. Yeah. The hijinks. They did one in like the eighties or nineties. Like, oh, you know. But I mean, like a serious one where, because like the little guy that Hyde is so evil, so dark, and so grumpy. You know, like yeah, he's like, like this little angry, pure. Um... Yeah, he's just that pure dark side. Yeah. So, um, oh, also, I was listening to this thing on, have you heard of discursive meditation? Discursive? That's what the guy called no. it. I don't know if that's, know. that's the way, but because um, last time we were here, we talked about meditation. I was talking about, you know, where you're focusing on your breath and that's yeah. it. This is more of a supposedly a Western okay. hermetic meditation. Wow. Okay. And I, I, this guy was talking about. I was like, "Whoa, this is powerful." It's instead of instead of uh, you know, you first you focus on your breath just to kind of get yourself into the, and then you focus on one thing and think it all the way through, like. Okay, so instead of focusing on your breath, you move over to like a thought. Yeah, but you keep your, it's it's mindfulness. You keep your mind on that one thought and stay on the thought and take it, take it, take it. Say, he was talking about like, like symbolism on the tarot cards. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I had a tarot card with me, but, um, you know, or something out of here. I don't know. Well, but he was, I'm trying to think of something. Dang it. I was trying to think of a common symbol, but you take you so you can. Like uh, I'm trying to think of a common. How symbol. about a um? How about a moon? The moon. There's a moon card. Tower, yeah. Okay. Tower. So tower say, card. Just say okay. Just say you fo you you want to concentrate on the moon. I don't know a lot about symbolism, so I'm, okay. that's why I'm kind of at a loss for. Okay. But you you take the moon and then you start thinking about. Like, what does its different phases represent, you know, or, or the effects it has on people? So you don't, you don't just think of the thought. You actually, you actually dwell on different aspects of it. Yeah. And, okay. What does it mean? You know, so the, 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 the thing is that the, the reason there's, they say that they teach in symbols and we'll probably get into this when we do the initiatives of the flames is because that's something that you can focus on you can use as a focus in your meditation and it will you can get deep with it instead of just thinking about nothing yeah which is which is fine and sure. there's different you know but this is more of a way to get you focused and ready for especially if you're doing like hermetic initiations or whatever you know like you're going to see all these symbols in you know future things like if you're do, like if you're to do the I get, you know, like be a Mason or in the Golden Dawn or yeah, whatever. You'd see a lot of these symbols and they mean deeper things than just the symbol. Okay. Yeah. So this is just like a, um, a practice, a mental practice of just kind of like having multiple layers of understanding on, on something. Yeah. Taking it, you know, taking a symbol into your mind and then seeing where it goes kind of thing i don't know i haven't tried it no, it, it sounds it's not like yeah exactly i think 
one of the ways you're one of the reasons why you might have a hard time you, know, you might be having a hard time under, uh, explaining it is probably because you haven't done it yet yeah that, that would be that sounds interesting though because I, I was like oh man i need to get back to meditation and then i heard this and i was like whoa this seems like a like a, a pretty neat way to do it or even just meditate on something i mean a, like something you read like a, a phrase because every every you know every day or you know i'll listen to stuff and then i'll there'd be something that jump out and be like oh you know that's something that you know i write it down yeah or you read you know you read something in the in your morning study or whatever and then you just meditate on that why not because why not make it a part of your life exactly just just ra- rather rather than just tossing it away and like that was cool yeah um or like, just like how yeah. does that work you know and i think i that's one that's a big problem i have is i hear a lot of really neat stuff and then and then i i'm like oh that's cool but then i forget about yeah, it yeah same here that's one of the reasons that i like doing our podcast because it gets me to to be like looking out for things and kind of like oh this is going to be cool to talk about yeah so what's the name of this discursive discursive meditation discursive meditation yeah yeah I'll try it tonight I don't know right when I get home today well you know the funny thing is is that we have all these different things that we've been talking about with the Kabbalion but how many of them have we been trying I, I do you I don't know I mean I've thought about them you know as, as I've studied for it but how many have I really put into my life yeah you know totally um, I would like to say that I've been doing that but I mean not, not when you have to be. You have to consciously do it, and so it's not, if you spend most of your life just like in the routine, then you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. well, anyway, is I think it's yeah a matter of kind of taking it from the page into your mind, and then it'll probably pop out, pop up, you know. But if you if it's just on the page and it kind of hits your mind and that's it, you know, you you don't have it with you so much, but. I mean, a lot of times I'm reading something and I'll be triggered with something. Oh, that's was that in the Bible somewhere, <laughs> you know? But I don't know where. But it's yeah. all relative. If only our brains were better at like keeping those notes like ready. Yeah, but and this might be and this might be a brain exercise too. There, there you go. Where you can, because, you know, like Sudoku. Remember when we were doing the Brain Age? Mm-hmm. Okay, for Nintendo DS, they had this game called Brain Age. And they had a couple different versions of different ones. Yeah. Um, but basically, you they would do things like memorization, all this different stuff to help exercise your brain. And it would, you know, studies have shown that. Yeah. That, the, you know, by doing this, people who do crossword puzzles every day. You know, old people, they're the ones that, you know, are less likely to get Alzheimer's or something. You know, something like that. Like, I mean, it's... So, Anne, so, Anne still does brain age, by the way. She does? How old's her brain? She's like, I've got the brain of a 10-year-old. I don't know if it's at where it's at, if it's gone down or up over like, the years. You've but, got the brain of a 10-year-old but and we, the body of a 16-year-old. <laughs> ah, yeah, baby. We were... We started, we started doing... Yeah, yeah, totally. We started doing brain age like what ten years ago, or or more. Yeah. So, dude, her brain's probably like minus three years old. The thing is, is like I actually it was just it was hard. The other day it was the ones where they're running in and out of the house. Oh and man, you're trying you to keep her, count. Yes. <sighs> she gets on her DS and she sits there and does it every day. Like it gets the daily the, the daily like stamp. Really? I'm like, you've been doing this for years. Now she's moved it from one DS to the other. You know, like she's not on this. She's upgraded her DSs over the years. Yeah, but still has the uh, brain age cartridge and still does it like every day, or most days. I don't hey, think she does it every day. Shot of what her brain age is. Yeah, I'm gonna ask her. That's what I'm saying. A lot of, I mean, it's like three. regardless of of you know the the key to immortality. You know, become a giant or whatever one of the keys to keeping yourself you know like in whatever physical shape you can or whatever is exercise but you know brain exercise is huge that's the most important part 
at least in my opinion. I'll take a quick shot of a quick uh, picture of her brain age. Brain age. Post, well, post it, dude. Brain age. I have, you know what? I think I have some old things off to give you, to give to her some old DS uh, games. She still has a few of the ones that we had back in the years. Like she has like the Professor Layton's and. Uh, she doesn't play those anymore. It's just Brain Age. What well, I'm saying, this one's like a Brain Age type game where you oh, do. Okay. It's yeah. got, but it's not Brain Age. Oh yeah, I remember. Is it Brain Academy? Yeah. I remember that. I don't know if she has it or not. But yeah, I remember we had it for yeah. Yeah, Good. Brain Academy. They had that on the Wii. Yeah, I think that's where we did have it on the. Where on the we Wii. had it on the Wii. Get it? W-I-I. Get it? I. Well, um, you you th- you just you you put out a lot of different things out today. Okay. And I didn't put anything out. I thought you had something you wanted to talk about. Um, I did, but I never got around to. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I'm not gonna do it. Are you ashamed, Brian? Yeah, I'm shamed by my brain age. <laughs> my brain age is 65. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, well, thanks for listening to me rant for the last. Hey, it was like it wasn't just you. I was like I was like the uh, you. I was like tapped. <laughs> Look at it. Anyway, okay. I'm like I can't stop. And once you pop one, the tootsie. It's over. It's over with the tootsie fruit chews. Tootsie roll by the Tootsie Roll Corporation. Big corporate tootsie. Big Tootsie. <laughs> <laughs> like, peanut and gluten free. Yeah. That's good to know. Take note that Tootsie, the fruit shoes for Tootsie Rolls are peanut free. Tootsie Roll Industries. Anyway, I did a little research on the Indian shooting a star. So did I. You did? Yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about that. So I'll <laughs> talk about your research. So I found I found Tootsie Rolls, actually, Tootsie Roll, the Tootsie Roll Corporation's page Yeah. on it. Is that what you found, too? I didn't find that. I read oh. some other stuff on it. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't th- because of the way their page is worded. I don't think that that. Um, I don't think that whole Indian shooting star thing came from Tootsie. No, it didn't. It yeah, c- they just acknowledged that it was. They they acknowledge it. They they had a, a supposedly they they wrote a little story, a whole little story that because they were get they would get so many different letters because. People had the thing where if you send it in to the corporation, they'll send you a free one. People, that was what the way they believed in. People did that. And they'd say, oh, sorry, we don't do that, you know, And but they'd be really nice about it. Yeah. So it was it was an urban legend. Yeah. So you, you never found out where it started at then? No, I never. No one's ever claimed I never, it, huh? Yeah, I never got to the point. That's, we should claim it. It started with us. We were the ones that made it I up. I was the one. I remember. <laughs> like, no, it had been around since 1932. Oh, I bet. It's, yeah, a long time. It, it had been around since the beginning. like Of time. Yeah, they, they were getting letters about it. So it's been around for a long time. I like your theory. I'm going with Brandon's. Is that it was some place in the Midwest where, you know, basically it was kind of like, Oh, you know, we'll give you a some candy shop, some pop, yeah. some soda shop. Yeah, we'll get, and so it would get keep the kids coming in, buying, you know, keep the Tootsie Roll pops flowing, and so, um, but they basically said that you get an Indian shooting a star in one out of every six. You know, if you had a the way they're cut, yeah, the way they cut the things. But it was always like sometimes you get a cut off one, and it's like no, this we don't. That one's yeah. not valid. It has Have to be, be a the full. full. One. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Like you got this guy running along in the cornfield, <laughs> jumping, you know, like, and then you got the Indian shoot. Like it's all. Yeah, we. Is all, there we really all, any difference? Yeah, we all live the same life almost. But um, it's all mental, man. Yeah, it's all mental. Think about it. We all share it. Yeah. Well. I do. I do remember that the the red. I don't know if it was because it was the best flavor, but I think the red, the red wrapper was even better. Uh, In my circles, there was like a the red Indian shooting star versus like other colors, like the brown one. No, or the, never, what other flavors were there? I don't purple. see color, dude. Like, I don't even. 
I'm colorblind. Yeah. I think it was probably pur- purple, brown, red, blue. No, it was it was purple, brown, orange, and red. There was no blue. Maybe later. You yeah. you're thinking of blow pops. Yeah. But I remember. I actually, my favorite was the purple. I always liked the purple. The red was good too, but the purple was great. like a great. Remember Alexander the Great? Did you ever get those little candies? I do remember that. Do do remember that? Yep. He was a little grape with the candy. Isn't what it used to be. No. If you know what, actually, it probably still is. I just don't know about it. <laughs> it anymore. is what it used to be. Yeah. Well, anyway. Um, Okay, well now we're kind of we're waning, but we we did follow up on that Tootsie Roll thing, so yeah, we did our homework. And if anybody has a source, a credible source yeah. that can get us to find out where that started, don't hide it. Let us know. That'd be All like right. that'd be the ex, that'd be the best. Uh, we'd be like a hit, you know. These guys have the source for they the Indian the shooting star. The Tootsie Roll pop. How many licks does it take to get to the bottom of the Tootsie Roll mystery? The mystery. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. All right. Well, well thanks. We'll see you. Can't wait to the next one. Talk All to you right. later. Cheers. Bye.